Hey friends, so I don't know about you, but the grocery store has felt like kind of a weird place lately. And I just have been avoiding it. Uh, not to mention the shelves are just a little emptier than normal. So it's been a lot of interesting conversations generated with friends and family and members of the Prairie Homestead community. And pantry preparedness is something that I'm feeling is more important than ever right now. So upon popular request, I wanted to take you into my pantry today the good, the bad, and the ugly, and kind of show you how I keep things on hand so we're ready for anything at any time. I don't consider myself a prepper necessarily or someone who has a ton of emergency preparedness stuff, but we kind of just live in a way that allows us to not be as dependent on the grocery store as the average person. So part of that is our garden and our milk cows and all our animals outside, but a big piece of that is also just what I keep in the cupboards on a regular basis. So let me show you what I've got. So I keep my food squirreled away kind of all over the place. So I'll, I'll take you to a couple different locations. And so, you know, I did clean sort of before I shot this video, but my pantry is not immaculate. It's not necessarily Pinterest worthy, but it works for us. So here you go. So in these, this area here, this is where I keep most of my everyday kind of baking supplies. So this is the stuff that I'm reaching for the most when I'm in the kitchen. Um, I don't keep a lot of the backup supply in here. It's mostly just enough of whatever I need to bake a cake or season my roast or whatever I'm cooking for supper on a regular basis throughout the week. So down here, um, I like to keep things in glass jars, if at all possible. So when I buy something from the store or I order it online, I will take it out of the package and stick it in my jars. Some of them have labels, some of them do not. I don't get super hung up on that. There was a time I thought we were going to be perfectly labeled and organized and kind of fell off the wagon. So we have just your standards in here. Baking powder, baking soda. I like to get those in bulk. I always get the aluminum free baking powder. Uh, organic non-GMO cornstarch and arrowroot powder. So these are my thickeners. I'm sure you heard of cornstarch, but arrowroot powder, in case you're not familiar with it, is a non-corn based, a little bit more natural sort of thickener. So if we have friends coming over that can't do corn or I can't find a good source of cornstarch, usually we'll be looking for the arrowroot powder instead. And most of the time you can use them pretty interchangeably. Okay, what else do we have in here? We have our homemade vanilla. You can find that recipe on the blog if you want to check that out. I like to keep a lot of honey in stock. Um, I, I'll show you some more varieties of honey I have down in the basement, but this is one that we love for our toast or biscuits just because it's local and raw. It's the really good stuff. Peanut butter. We've got our vinegars, some sesame oil for any sort of Asian recipes, breadcrumbs, some parsley, the chocolate chips. Don't tell the kids those are in there. So like I mentioned, glass jars just help me feel like I can see what I have. I'm not dealing with plastic bags that I have to clip or tape down or are opening up and spilling all over the, the shelves. Um, and one thing I love to do with these glass jars is to use these recap lids on them. You can use a regular old lid, but these come in all different sorts of styles and have all sorts of little gadgets and they just make it a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined. So I like these pourable lids for things that are a little more fluid. Not that breadcrumbs are fluid, but you know what I mean. I can pour them out, um, makes it a little bit easier. And I also like these little flip caps for the bigger items. This makes things a little more streamlined. Now, when I have something I might wanna shake out like salt or sugar or uh, herb or a spice, you can grab little shaker inserts and put those right in your caps. And it just makes it a little bit cleaner, not as messy. So. Just a little trick if you're working on organizing your pantry. Like I said, mine is not exactly Pinterest worthy, but I do little things just to make it a little more user friendly. Okay, up here, you will see I have a ridiculous amount of herbs and spices, and I'm not sorry about it because I think it's really important uh, in from scratch cooking to make everything taste good. So I kind of have things categorized by how much I use them. Um, so I guess I should show you this first. Right here, this is my most used herbs and spices and I keep them right on the counter because I use them multiple times a day. And a lot of you have asked, this is actually an old Coke crate, it's an antique. And then I just found this brand of glass spice jars that just happened to fit in there. So I refill these. I don't buy new ones every time they went out. I just refill them from the natural food store. So I keep 
my favorite ones here and my next level of favorites in this basket. So I won't go through all of these, but we have everything from tarragon and sage, there's cloves, there is fennel and savory, peppercorns, the things I might need for occasional recipes that I don't want to stash too far away. Okay, what else is in here? We have some, some teas, which definitely, this basket is used a ton in the winter time. So this is kind of my baking area, and then we go down here, and this is where I keep more of my grains and flowers. So it's kind of packed in here. So I like to buy in bulk whenever possible, and sometimes it's easier said than done, depending on what you're trying to get. But I will keep things in bulk down in the basement, which I'll show you that in a minute, and then just refill whatever I need up here. So some of the things I keep on hand in quantity at all times um, would be cocoa powder is something I do buy. And this is actually kind of ironic because um, I'm waiting for a big shipment of cocoa powder to come in and it's not here yet. So it's kind of empty, but I like to keep a lot of this on hand. It's cheaper than baking chocolate. And you can often make substitutions in recipes that call for baking chocolate. You can just use your cocoa powder instead. Um, raisins, which are also waiting to come in the mail. The kids like those for snacks. I have a little jar, and this is a little jar, trust me, of whole wheat flour up here. And this is what I use to feed my sourdough starter, which is over there on the counter. Or this is what I use for whole wheat breads or baking. So I grind up a little bit at a time and keep it in this jar. We have coconut flakes, we have garbanzo beans, we have quinoa. And if you're not familiar with quinoa, it's a type of grain, a cereal grain. It's very high protein, it's gluten-free, and it's good for breakfast or good for salads. So I like to keep that as an alternative to oatmeal. We have some unground wheat berries here. And probably the most used container down here would be the coconut oil. So I like to get my coconut oil in bulk. Um, I actually buy it in a five gallon bucket and I'm pretty sure the UPS man thinks I'm crazy. So I keep the five gallon bucket downstairs and then I just refill this little bucket because I use coconut oil a ton. Crisco and shortening and vegetable oils are something that I just don't like. I don't think they're good for us. They have a lot of health ramifications that I'm not comfortable with and coconut oil is a really good alternative. So I get the refined coconut oil, which means it doesn't taste super coconutty. Uh, sometimes you want that coconut flavor, sometimes you don't. So this stuff is pretty neutral and I use it for everything. Baking, frying, making popcorn, you name it, we use coconut oil for it. All right, I think back here is not super interesting. We have some coarse salt. We have some fine salt for refills. I have some lard that we will use for frying or making pie crust, like best pie crust ever. And I have more jars of that downstairs, but this is just my jar I'm using right now. Okay, so that's the main stuff here in the kitchen. I'm gonna take you around the corner and I'll show you the rest of the pantry. So one of my little tricks is I actually like to decorate with some of my pantry ingredients, just because I think it gives your kitchen that kind of old time homestead vibe. So you'll see that I have decoration stuff here, but I also have woven in some actual food. So we have our coffee beans here in this old, well, this vintage reproduction jar, uh, our popcorn supply, which is getting a little bit low. And then I have some different canisters and jars with beans. And this is something I'll swap out kind of depending on my mood or what looks good. But there's just something I love about food in jars. So don't be afraid to pull them out of the cabinet and put them on display. It can actually kind of class up your kitchen and it gives you a little bit more storage space. Okay, so this is our laundry room. And if you've ever seen my videos where the window's in the kitchen, the window's actually not going outside. It's just coming into the laundry room. Also, no finished trim. So that is a fun little detail. Um, maybe someday when Christian's done with my greenhouse. So this is our secondary supply of backup ingredients. And some of you might be thinking, um, wow, like how many levels do you have or how many layers do you have? And we have a lot, not only because we live 45 minutes from town, but also I just like knowing that we have the stuff we use frequently on hand at all times so I don't have to make quick trips to the store or as we experienced recently this year, sometimes the grocery store was out of things um, and I didn't feel stressed or pressured because I knew I had a good supply of everything here at home. And that's just kind of my usual way of operating. It's not something I stock up on when I feel like an emergency is coming or it's not something I hoard. This is just how we live. So I'm a huge fan of 
everybody adopting this kind of everyday pantry preparedness idea because I think it's really important that we aren't expecting to be dependent on the store, uh, you know, going there every day or going there every time we need a banana or another bag of flour. It's good to have something on hand at all times. So here's what I have. Um, <clears throat> and this varies a little bit kind of depending on the time of year and what we're doing. I did just clean it so everything is a little bit more organized than normal. Um, we're hosting a lot of events and barbecues this summer. So I have some, you know, barbecue sauce and some mustard and some mayo. Sometimes I make these things myself. Sometimes something's got to give when I have 20 people coming over and I'm in a hurry. So you'll see some compromise ingredients here and maybe some of you will be surprised that I have some stuff that's not 100% from scratch. But like I've explained before, I'm a big fan of the 80-20 rule. So we eat really good 80% of the time and then we need to have a little bit of a compromise. Just don't sweat it. Okay, so we have um, just backups. We have a jar of vanilla beans that I need to refill with some vodka to make another batch of vanilla. So that's waiting. Taco chips. Some coconut milk. I don't keep a lot of this on hand because we do have the milk cows, but every once in a while, there'll be a recipe that calls for coconut oil and I like to have it available. We have some coconut aminos, which is a soy sauce alternative. A little bit better for you. This is some chai vinegar we made last year. Some of you may have remembered that recipe on the blog. And down here we have a little bit more of our flowers and our grains. So um, I do actually keep a pretty decent supply of all-purpose flour on hand. Um, I use whole wheat flour, I use alternative flours, but when I have a lot of folks coming over for barbecues and get togethers and I'm making hamburger buns or pie crust or baked goods, I, I go through the flour pretty quickly. And sometimes 100% whole wheat isn't a fabulous choice for all of those things. So I do lean on that sometimes. So we have all purpose flour. We also have a pretty eclectic variety of gluten-free options because Christian was on a cleanse earlier this year and we were experimenting with that. So um, I have some gluten-free blend. I'm not your foremost expert on gluten-free. So don't ask me questions on which one I like better because I'm still trying to figure that out. But I've had a whole bunch of stuff in here I was experimenting with. So this is really isn't a usual player in my pantry, but it's here right now. I also keep uh, dry beans on hand. I like to buy these in bulk. They've been a little hard to find this year, so right now I'm just getting the smaller bags, but we use those instead of any canned beans because they cook up so quick in the Instant Pot. All right, so down here, a few more compromise things. We have some dry pasta. Yes, I do make my own pasta, but every once in a while, I do need some backup on a busy day. Um, we have some sugar that maybe isn't my first choice, but like I said, when I'm baking or I'm cooking for a lot of people um, in a small amount of time, Sometimes I have a hard time stocking my natural organic whole cane sugar, so I gotta use a little bit of a compromise from the regular grocery store. We also have, uh, I like to keep some juice. This is what I feed my kombucha. Um, we do our second ferment with fruit juice, so that's why that's down there. And then down here at the very bottom, we have a few of our potatoes, some rice. Um, these ones are not homegrown because we ran out of our homegrown supply, but. Some of you may have seen my 100 foot long potato patch that we planted last month. So I'm hoping that this fall, this will all be filled with homegrown potatoes instead. Okay, I don't know if I should show you this side. Don't judge me. But this is kind of my, part of my jar mess. Um, we have some empty mason jars because I'm always using them for storage in the kitchen or um, canning or whatever. So I always intend to take them downstairs to the basement and they just don't always get down there. So I have a lot in here. I also will keep a few um, jars of my home canned food. You'll see the rest of it downstairs in just a sec. But just things I might need to grab on the fly when I'm in the kitchen, I'll keep those here um, just for fun. And more potatoes, more onions. And this is another piece I wanted to show you. So this little guy really saved our bacon earlier this year when flour was in such short supply. So this is a grain mill. And I'm gonna do another video where I actually walk you through the grain mill and how it works and how I do my whole wheat. But having this little gadget with our whole wheat berries down in the basement that I was actually gonna to feed to the chickens that I ended up pulling up and grinding into flour this spring, that enabled us to have all the flour we needed even though the grocery stores were empty. So if you are looking for an option that will give you a little more pantry security when it comes to the flours, definitely check out the grain mills.
All right, so for the last layer, we got three layers. Like I said, I have my little pantry in the kitchen. I have my secondary backup pantry in here. I'll take you downstairs for the tour of the larder in the basement. So our basement stays pretty cool. It doesn't freeze, but it's an ideal place to store some of our extra, extra food. So when we remodeled our house, we added this part of the basement on, but this part I'm taking you into here was hand dug in the 40s. Well, at least part of it was. So it's not finished, but the temperature stays really regular. And I have dreams of someday turning in this into some sort of root cellar. So we'll see how that goes. But this is kind of our final food storage supply down here. So over here is my favorite shelf. These are all our home canned goods. And it's actually a little bit on the scant side right now because it's July and we're gearing up for our next phase of canning season. So we've been eating on this for a while. It needs to be restocked. But we have everything from homegrown pickles, green beans, home canned peaches, applesauce, cherries, a bunch of random stuff, jam from last year, um, some home canned soups, and a ton of tomato sauce. So I think this idea of having a closet or a shelf in your house or some sort of little pantry tucked away in your basement like this is really one of the best things you can do for you and your family to just increase your peace of mind. Even when the world doesn't feel crazy or the grocery stores have plenty of food on the shelf, this is such a good feeling to know we have good, nutritious, whole foods right here waiting for us. I know what's in them. There's no weird ingredients and I can just come down here and grab a jar whenever I need it. All right, so over here is some of the stuff that isn't quite so homemade, just some other things we keep in stock. Um, so coconut oil, we have some dairy-free friends. So when they come over, I like to bake with coconut oil just so they don't have an allergic reaction. Some extra garbanzo beans, backup of maple syrup and some honey. So like I showed you upstairs, um, I like a local raw honey for just eating. But when it comes to canning with honey or cooking with larger amounts of honey, sometimes I'll be honest, I just go get the stuff at Costco. It's decent quality, but I'm not gonna use my most expensive honey in those canned recipes because they're cooked for so long and it kind of defeats the purpose of having a raw honey. Okay, and then over here, just a lot of supplies. We got our cheese making stuff, some soap making stuff, a giant bag of sea salt because running out of salt is definitely an emergency around here. And then I have some of my buckets. So not all of these are full, but we do have that giant container of coconut oil I told you about. So my, my one little trick to find buckets is to go to your local bakery um, and ask if you can have their old frosting buckets because these are um, food grade. So you don't have to worry about weird stuff leaching into your food. And you usually have to scrape all the frosting residue out, which is a little bit of a pain. But then a lot of times they'll give these to you for free or for a couple bucks and you can use them to store all your dry goods because we do get mice down here. So we have to make sure everything's in a nice solid sealed container. So that's it, my friends. I would highly encourage you, and actually I'm gonna challenge you to start brainstorming how you can convert maybe a shelf in your closet or a little cupboard in the corner of your kitchen into your own everyday pantry preparedness supply. It doesn't have to be complicated, it doesn't have to be fancy, but I guarantee it's going to give you a ton of peace of mind. So on that note, I'm gonna grab what I need and head back up to the kitchen.